All right, welcome to a how to draw video. Today we're gonna to be drawing a pelican. Uh, this picture was taken by a coworker. She's super cool. Um, but all right, to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first draw this oval shape that makes up the body, as well as this diagonal line that makes up the angle of the beak. So the first thing first, uh, I'll show you two different ways to get this ovaly shape. Uh, the first way that um, is helpful is if you start off with drawing a slight frowny face. Notice that I'm going at an angle. This is not a perfectly straight line. This is kind of tilted. And then going down below, however chubby you want your pelican, and then doing a slight curve line like this. Notice that it's kind of parallel to this top line. And then capping it off with two parentheses. This is gonna curve in this direction. And this one um, is gonna curve in the opposite direction like this. We'll worry about putting the wings and stuff on later. We just wanna get that body shape. So if you struggle doing it that way, another way that might be easier for you, which you don't have to do this, uh, by the way, uh, but this is just to show you, uh, is you can always start with the parentheses first and then go up at an angle and then draw the other parentheses wherever you want it and then connect those two lines together. For some people that might be easier. So you can do it either way. Both of them will work out just fine. All right. So now that I have my basic shape for my body, now what I'm gonna do is before I draw the head, I wanna go ahead and draw this diagonal line that shows where the head and the bill are. So I'm gonna draw this very, very lightly because this is just to show me how big I need to make everything. So if I measure from the tip of the bill to the back of the head, that is gonna be the same measurement as the body that I just drew. So from the back of that sphere or oval to the front of that oval, that's the same distance as the head to the bill. Now notice the angles. So here's the angle of the body and then here's the angle of the head. So make sure that you don't draw the head perfectly straight. That should be pretty angled and that should be able to help you out greatly. So I see that the top of the head right here is gonna be about half-ish of the body. So I'm gonna find about halfway in the body and go up. And I'm gonna put a little indicator dot a little bit above the body. So notice that there is a distance between the top of the head and the body. Make sure that you leave plenty of space for a neck in the back of the head, okay? All right, so once I have that, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw that strong diagonal that's going down. Notice that it does get right there next to the front of the body. So what can help is if you do indicator dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this measurement and I'm gonna rotate my paper. Or if you want to, if, you, if your hands can't stay still, hold a pencil like this so that you know exactly how far you need to make your body or your head. So if this is where the head starts, this is where it needs to stop. And I'm gonna first kind of get my angle right so I wanna make sure that my angle looks pretty good. I think this angle right here looks pretty good. So I'm gonna put my finger here. This is called putting a marker dot. I do this a lot, especially when drawing things that are a little bit complicated. Put a little bitty dot there. So now I can see where the head needs to start and stop. So I'm just gonna very, very lightly draw a little diagonal line so I know where my angles are going. I will be erasing a lot of that. So make sure you don't draw it too dark. All right, so now that I have my angle line, now I can go ahead and draw my head shape. The head is also kind of sort of an ovally shape, but notice that there's the space for the neck in between the body and the head, so don't draw it too close. So I'm gonna start here. I'm just gonna go, if I look at this, the head kind of ends almost at the end of the body, but there's still a gap there. So I'm gonna go in just a bit and up, so that'll tell me about where I need to draw my head shape. And now um, all these things that we're drawing, they're called indicator dots for a reason. They don't have to be perfect. You can make things a little further out or a little further in as you need to. That just kind of depends on how um, accurate you did your dots. So right about here-ish is where I'm gonna have my head. Then I can get rid of the lines on the inside. Um, erasing as you go helps so that you don't get so overwhelmed with the amount of lines that you have later. So keep eraser handy if possible. All right, so here I can see that there's that little tuft of feathers up above the head. So I'm just gonna do that just by adding a little curve that goes up and down. So it's like a little parenthesis or smiley face, and then you just curve it with another parenthesis. Now you can leave it simplified like this, or if you wanna add a texture, you can add multiple of those. So I'm just gonna add, this is that Z line that we've done before, if you've ever drawn with me. It's where you basically, if you think of like the letter W, kind of like this, but you wanna make it to where it's a little bit fluffier. So you're gonna add parentheses instead of straight lines for those Ws, and that can make a nice little fluff fluff for the top of its head. So you can do as many or as few of those as you would like, but that's kind of up to you. All right, so now that I have the back of the head established, I can erase that line on the inside. And now I wanna go ahead and do this curve for the neck. 
that comes down. It's just a parenthesis. So I'm just going to start at the back of the head. I'm going to go out a little bit and then curve it inwards until it touches the body. Once it touches the body, then I'm safe to stop. All right. So now my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the head part. Here we can see it gets a little bit wibbly. And uh, there's like a V shape here, and there's lots of little curve lines here. And then there's this curve that represents the jaw. So I'm going to first establish the jaw line, which is about halfway on the head. So it's going to do like a little tiny parenthesis here. And then erase this line behind it so that I can tell where my neck and my head is. All right, so I think the easiest way to draw this particular part here, because there's a lot going on, is first determine where you're going to start and where you're going to stop this. So I would suggest draw this little triangle first to make it easier for you. So starting at the top of the head, I'm just going to go down into a tiny triangle like this. And if we look really closely, we can actually see that there's like a little V in that triangle that if you wanna get that extra detail, you can, but that just depends on how realistic you want to go for it. All right, so notice there's plenty of space between the head and the body. Don't let it get too close. All right, so now that I have that, I see that the eye if I extend that triangle, it's gonna go around the eye shape. So I would go ahead and draw the eye shape first so you know where to put that curve. So if I look at it, I'm gonna determine that the eye is definitely above the jawline. So if I go above the jawline and across, so right after this right here, I'm just gonna draw a little circle. And you can draw this a little bigger if you want to to make it more cartoony or you can keep it simple. And then I draw like a little pupil on the inside. And I always like to leave a little highlight, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You can fill it in black if you would rather. All right, so now that I have that eye, now I see that this diagonal line is gonna go around the eye like this. And now stop whenever you get to the bottom of the eye though, don't go past the bottom of the eye. Once you get to here, this is where you get that wibbly line. So I'm gonna move this down just a tiny bit here so that I have space for this wibbly line. So it kind of goes in a smiley face that turns into a frowny face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right here at the bottom of this little curve I just drew. I'm going to do like a very tiny smiley face and then I'm going to turn that smiley face into a frowny face like this. That way I get kind of like a uh, stretched out S shape and that'll give you that kind of shape that you need for the side of the head. So just a smiley face into a frowny face. So it'll look kind of like this whenever you're drawing it. So that'll make it a little bit easier so you can see that line. All right, so now that I have that shape around the eyes done, now I can go back to the actual bill part itself. So there's a bunch of stuff going on in the bill. There's lots of wrinkles and folds, especially for a pelican. If you've ever seen, they've got those like really big mouths that they can open up, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna first start off with just the outline of the bill. So starting up here, we can see that there's like a little dip where the uh, head dips in and then the bill sticks out a little bit. And then it goes relatively straight until it gets to the end where it has that little round part. So what I would suggest is down here, Go ahead and draw the part that you're gonna finish on. That way it makes it easier to connect it. So down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a really small smiley face like this, because they have that little rounded part to the end of their bills. All right, now from this smiley face, my goal is that I wanna connect this all the way up to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put like a little line right here on the side of the head so that I know where I want to stop my bill. And then my goal, whoops, <laughs> my bad. So now my goal is to connect this corner all the way down here. So I don't want to use a ruler because it is slightly curved in. I would rather have it curved in a little bit rather than completely flat. Obviously not this curved, but just to show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to take this line. I'm just going to kind of slowly go down, maybe a slight curve to it, and then connect it to that bill right there. So notice it's not a perfectly straight line. It is okay if you do a perfectly straight line. That's totally fine. But um, the more um, imperfect you do it, the more realistic it feels. All right, so now that I have this dip here, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw the line that indicates the separation of the mouth. So this line right here is the mouth line, the one that goes down like this. I know it seems a little confusing, it's a little weird. But that right there is the center of the mouth line and this is the bottom of the mouth and the rest of it's just wrinkles. So I would go ahead and draw that center mouth line here we can see that it starts right below the eye. So I'm gonna go below the eye and put a little dot. And notice that we have a frowny face that turns into a smiley face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start with that smiley face. So I'm just gonna curve it up until I get pretty close to the uh, torso. And then I'm gonna start curving it like this till it turns into that frowny face so that I can connect them together. So it kind of frowns and then smiles to the tip of that beak. 
All right, once I have that shape established, then I can go ahead and draw the rest of the beak, which I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that the wing's overlapping. I'll just erase that later. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm just gonna follow the line that makes up the beak. Now, very important, the beak stops right here on the bottom because this is overlapping it. So if it helps put a little dot here or put a little line here to know where you're gonna stop it. Or you can do what I've done. I've drawn it halfway here and I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the halfway right here. Like this. And that way I have the shape of the bill. And then I can erase the body on the inside. And then if you would like an extra detail, they do have that flap that you can draw like an extra wrinkle here in order to draw the flap. Now this particular pelican has colors on it. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and draw the lines that indicate where those colors are. So there's like a little curve right here and there's a little curve right here that I'm gonna personally go ahead and draw. You don't have to draw these two lines. I just like to show the indication of where those colors are. All right, so now that I have the head done, now is uh, the time for the wings and stuff. So I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit so we can see that more. All right, so um, I would save the feet for last. So we're gonna go and do this wing here. Here we can see this wing is really large. Um, it kind of cuts across the back of the body. It goes in front of the bill just a little bit and then curves all the way back to the back of the body. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to draw um, somewhere right about here. So it's about like maybe a fourth down the body. I'm just gonna draw very lightly a diagonal line that's not perfectly straight. Notice it's kind of crooked a little bit, okay? And then I'm going to extend that diagonal line a little bit, overlap the mouth just a tiny bit and put a parenthesis like this. So it's almost like a greater than a less than sign, but it's kind of rounded. You don't want it too straight. All right, once I have this curve, then what I'm gonna do is I see that this curve goes really far close to the bottom of the body, almost like a fourth up from the bottom of the body. So I'd kind of put like a little indicator dot and then connect it up like this and then go towards the back of the body. Now that I'm getting close to the back of the body though, I see that my wings have kind of like a dip and then they go forward like this. So I would wanna create that kind of frowny face that goes to a point and back up. So once I get about here to where I'm close to the back of the body, instead of going straight, I'm gonna do a slight dip for a frown, however long you want your wings to be. And then I'm going to curve that back up like this so that I get that wing shape. It almost kind of looks like a whale. <laughs> All right, then I can erase the inside of the wing. So I can erase this up here where the mouth is and I can erase the back of the body. So I'm gonna, before I do the textures, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the other wing shape just to make it easy on me and you. All right, so for this other part, I'm actually gonna go ahead and draw the neck that is supposed to be right here. Here we can see that the neck is actually being pushed down into the body here. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend on the neck right here. I'm gonna go ahead and extend that down like this. And then I can erase the body on the inside. This will make it look like the neck is part of the body and not just hovering above it. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and draw the back. The back is kind of peeking up like this behind the neck. So I'm just gonna go ahead and extend this line and make a frown so that this is the back of the body. And then I have the wing is just gonna connect to the back of the body where we had that original line drawn. I'm just gonna go all the way out next to this one and then add a little curve to indicate that this is a separate wing from this wing. So that now I have the arch of the back and I have the arch of both of the wings. All right, so this is just gonna be the belly going all the way back here. And now something that I do see here is we do have part of the tail is exposed. We see that little bump and then it connects to the bottom of the wings. So what I'm gonna do is whenever I get close to the back of the wings, is I'm gonna add a slight bump and then turn that into a frown. So a slight bump and then a frown. So ooh, I drew mine a little bit small. So I'm gonna draw mine a little bit bigger. If it helps start backwards and then add that bump so that you can see a little bit more of the tail. So pretty much the same line that we did uh, before where you're doing a frowny turning into a smiley in order to get that kind of bump for the tail texture. All right, so before we hang on to the uh, wing, or before we move on to the legs, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of wing texture so it doesn't look quite so smooth. So to do that, we're gonna look at the direction the feathers are growing and the length of the feathers. So here we see that the feathers are really, really short and they're kind of growing in a downwards direction like this. However, once we get closer to the back of the wing, we're starting to do more of a stronger diagonal and the length of the feathers get longer. So whenever you have that, it's easier to start with the smaller feathers and then work your way down to the longer feathers. So an easy texture to do for smaller feathers is you're just doing kind of like curve lines not necessarily even drawing the full feather itself. 
And then whenever you get to the longer feathers, you can start adding a little hook. I call this a hook because it looks kind of like a fishing hook. So it's like you're drawing the letter J and that'll create kind of more of an illusion of more feathers or of thicker, fuller feathers. And then all I'm doing is I'm just drawing that letter J over and over in the direction that those feathers are going. And then whenever you get to longer feathers, that's whenever you can draw the actual full feather, which is like U shapes. So short feathers are just little lines. Medium feathers are little J's. And then long feathers are U's, okay? All right, so now that I'm getting closer to the longer feathers, I'm actually gonna start drawing U shapes that are gonna go within the boundaries of this line. And once again, it's okay if you go outside of your line. So you can always make your feathers a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than they need to be. The more realistic you want it, the more you wanna mess up this line. So if you want it more realistic, purposely draw some of these feathers going outside the boundaries of that basic wing that we drew, and that'll make it look more roughly and more natural, and then make it look more like an actual pelican. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before over here. So starting with some short feathers, some J feathers, and then some U feathers in order to add that texture. And once again, you can always add a couple that are um, kind of like flyaways, just to give it a little bit more of a nice texture. And then I can look very carefully at the back feathers. They're also kind of going downwards. So I'm just gonna do a couple textures going downwards, not too much, but it's up to you how textured that you want to make your bird. So um, uh, ooh, one thing I didn't notice until just now is they have like that yellow on the top of their head. So they have like up here, they have like a little bit of an indicator that they have a color difference. And all I'm doing is I'm just doing like really tiny lines like this in order to indicate that color value, which once again, you don't have to do that. I'm just, I just think it's cool. So, all right, now that I have all of the body and I have the wings, now the last step that I have is the feet. Now this particular pelican is balanced on a uh, post. So what can help is to draw the thing that it's standing on first before you draw the legs so that you know where to put everything. So I see that this post just has an oval for the top and two straight lines, and it's really close to the body. It's not too far down. So I'm just gonna start right below that little bump that I did, <coughs> excuse me, for the uh, leg. I'm just gonna do a little oval shape like this. I'm just gonna draw two lines going down to indicate the top of the pier. So just an oval and two lines down. You can add textures of that if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it blank for now. All right, so now I wanna determine where are the legs compared to the rest of the body. So if I'm looking at this picture, I can see that if I go up from the leg, it's a little bit behind the head. So I'm gonna look and see where my head's at, go a little bit behind it, and then go down. And that's gonna tell me about where I need to have my legs come out. So what I'm gonna do is for this front leg, I can actually see some details. I see the leg, ankle, and then I see the feet. But for this other one, I can barely see anything. So I'm gonna draw the one in front first. So to do that, I'm just gonna start about where I think the legs, so like a little bit behind the head. I'm just gonna start off with two very short lines going straight down that are close to each other, but there is a gap because I don't want it too close. Otherwise it won't really look like a leg. It'll look like a stick. And then what I'm gonna do is it needs to be a diagonal line until it gets right there into the middle of that post. So I'm actually gonna work backwards. I'm gonna start at the middle-ish of the post and then do a diagonal line back like this. Now, if your post middle is a little bit further away than mine, that's totally fine. You can do it in any direction that you want. All right, now I see that the feet, we have um, like a back flipper and then we've got some toe flippers up front. So for the back flipper, I'm just gonna do a diagonal line like this. And then for the front flipper, I'm gonna do a diagonal line going forward like this. Now, all I'm gonna do for the flipper for now, I have like this, uh, it's kind of a cool pose. Uh, the two toes on the side are actually curving around the bottom of the post. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little line coming from here until I get to the edge of the post and then I'm gonna do a diagonal line down like this and then bring back up a toe. Now this is notice just a V shape, but notice that it gets a little pointy right here. So all I'm doing is I'm just doing a diagonal line, diagonal line, V shape, right? Now I'm gonna ignore the webbing for now. I'll come back and doing the webbing later. So now what I'm gonna do is this toe is actually gripping. So it's gonna go forward slightly and then down slightly. So forward slightly, down slightly, follow that back up. And then the last one's just going kind of straight, okay? So all you're doing is just doing little V shapes. Then what I see is I see that the webbing is connecting it. So I would just do like a little bit of a slight curve to connect each of those toes in order to get the webbing of the foot. All right, 
Now I can erase the inside of the body here. I can actually see that this right here where you see that little bit of a lighter spot right here is actually where the leg is connecting to the body. So the leg doesn't just magically start, it has feathers going over it. So what you can do is you can add a couple V shapes in order to create the texture of the feathers that go above the leg. So all I did was just V shapes like this, kind of like that Z line in order to kind of almost like hide where the leg starts and stops. I'm gonna make sure it goes slightly above the body so that you don't get confused as to which leg that was, because otherwise you might think that's the leg behind it. All right, so speaking of the leg, oh, I forgot to erase this line right here. There you go, beautiful. All right, speaking of the leg behind it, this leg starts behind the body, and then it does a slight diagonal line, and then you only see one toe here, and then you barely see any of the other toes because they are overlapping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go behind the leg that I just drew, and I'm just going to do a slight diagonal line until it just barely gets above the um, stump. Now, oops, make sure that this second line doesn't make your leg thicker than your previous one. You want them to be about the same because otherwise it's going to look a little weird if you have one leg super thick and one leg super thin. All right, so now that I'm really close to the stump, now I can just go back, add that toe here. I'm just going to go forward on both sides. So toe, just keep going until you touch the previous leg and then stop. Same thing up here. I'm just going to do a slight diagonal line and then stop when I touch that previous leg. And then I see maybe a couple toes. I see two toes here. So I'm just going to do one toe and then maybe part of another toe. If you can fit it, if you can't, it's totally fine just to do one. The other toe is hidden so I don't see it. So all I did for that was I just did these shapes, just like little V's that are sideways. And then of course we have our webbing between the toes. So I just connect it with a little bit of a parenthesis line, kind of like this. All right, so if you can still see some of the lines through, like I can see some of the peer through, so I'm just gonna erase that. And then that's pretty much it for the feet. Uh, you can add the texture of the feet if you want to, but I think it looks fine just as is. Uh, one thing that I do wanna add a little bit of texture, they have a little bit of roughly feathers on their torso. So I would kind of get a little bit of a feather texture here personally, just to make it look a little bit fuzzier, just cause I think fuzziness is cute. All right, and that's pretty much it for the pelican. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of shading because I just think shading always helps make the picture pop. Um, if you would rather color it than shade it, definitely feel free to. I think coloring looks amazing on these kinds of artworks, um, especially if uh, you're using stuff like color pencils or markers or even watercolor. Always looks really, really pretty whenever you have a nice drawing as a base. All right, so um, but yeah, so that pretty much concludes uh, this particular drawing. Um, I love uh, uh, being able to draw from other people's photos and references and stuff. So if you would like to learn how to draw anything in particular, uh, feel free to just uh, send me a picture that you would like me to go over and I'll try my best. I'll probably practice it first uh, just because sometimes, especially whenever it's animals or things that I'm not very um, experienced with, uh, then I do have to practice it a little bit first just because um, even though I've been drawing for years and years, uh, I, there's still so many things that I don't know how to draw. So I'll have to practice them just a little bit uh, before uh, I'm able to actually teach them. So, uh, but yeah, all right. So uh, I'm just shading some areas that I think could help make this pop with a little bit more contrast, especially since we had so many overlaps on this particular piece. So um, anytime that you have an overlap, if you can add just a little bit of shadow underneath it or above it, it can always make it pop just a little bit more. And that just makes your picture look a little bit more 3D. All right, so that pretty much concludes this picture. Uh, I hope you uh, had fun drawing with me. And if you need any help, always feel free to send me an email or ask me. I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, thanks for drawing with me. Have a good day. Bye.